Welcome to the UIAAA Connection Podcast. Hometown Ticketing is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the UIAAA Connection Podcast and to provide schools nationwide with the best options for digital ticketing for their events. Visit their website at hometownticketing.com to learn how they can make digital ticketing possible and simple at your school. Thank you to Hometown Ticketing for their exclusive sponsorship of the UIAAA Connection Podcast. Welcome back to another edition of the UIAAA Connection. Today we have as our special guest, Cheryl Hadley, Certified Athletic Administrator, the Director of Athletics at North San Pete High School. Welcome to the podcast, Cheryl. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Let's have you begin by sharing with our audience here in Utah and across the nation where you grew up, where you went to school, your first job, et cetera. Okay. Uh, I grew up in a small town called Colville, Utah, northern part of Utah. Um, I had four brothers. We had a small motel and a family farm and kind of learned work there. Went to North Summit High School, graduated from North Summit, then went to Snow College, attended Snow College and Weber State. Uh, and after graduating from Weber State, I was able to be hired in here at North San Pete. I was 30 years ago. So I've been at North San Pete the whole time it's since 1993. This is my 30th year of teaching. And yeah. Let's talk about for a moment. You're from Coville. So that's maybe what, 10 minutes from Juan Chip from Rockport Reservoir, did you yeah. spend quite a bit of your youth there? Or did you go further up to Echo, which is probably not that far the other way? Yeah, Echo's actually closer. It's like two miles down the road. Um, I didn't do a lot of boating or anything growing up. We uh, we spent a lot more time in the mountains and that, but not on the lake. But yep, it's right there. So talk about youth sports and the possibility that you participated in Colville, not the biggest town. Yeah. So growing up, I was able to participate. We had little league basketball that we participated in. And I did, I, I was thinking about this. I also participated in, I don't know if anybody remembers the old uh, Elks national, uh, what was it? Free throw contest you did with right. the Elks. So I mm-hmm. did that and the and then was it the 4-H or somebody that sponsored the one-on-one contest so a lot of basketball that way and really that was uh then in the summer they had softball and I played a little slow pitch softball in the summer and growing up and then as I hit high school age you weren't in that little league program anymore we actually formed a team of high school age girls and we played in the women's softball slow pitch softball in the summer so that was kind of my experience with youth sports really it was those two things excellent let's have you talk for a moment about the mentors in your life parents coaches other people that have had a big influence on you okay uh so i would say first of all obviously my parents teach me importance of work and and commitment and and that's big things for athletics. As I, in high school, so I played volleyball, basketball, ran track in high school. And uh, my sophomore year, we got a new basketball coach. His name was Gary Morrill. And he was a teacher and a coach. And um, I just gained great respect for him and, and love for him. And he taught me a lot of things. He was a great coach. We had success uh, so he, he's one that always comes to mind. I appreciate his example and his, um, in my youth, you know, youth growing up that way. Another one, when I got hired here at North Sam Pete, I became good friends with, and, uh, Sharon Christensen, who is a teacher and a coach. I coached with her in different sports and she was a great mentor. Um, she was the AD later on and she, was always so willing to, I mean, I had a lot of conversations with her. She's such a good listener and throw out, you know, um, advice, but not too much, just knew just what to say and, and when, and 
And then the last one I, I think is Nan Alt, who was our principal and is now our superintendent. Superintendent. There you go. Yeah. And she's a good friend, a valued friend that I have. And same thing. She, I guess, taught me a lot about how to be confident in, my, in myself in the in the position that I have and the things that I do in the classroom and with with athletics and just a great example of listening and and making sure people know you care and understand their their needs. So those are the ones that's, I would say. That's great. Speaking of Nana, it's got to be great for you as the AD having a former principal who you work for and now the superintendent. I know she's uh, a friend of AD's and I know she's been to our conference and taken some classes before. So talk about how that's a benefit. Yeah, it actually is uh, really beneficial, I feel. She has an understanding of um, the things we deal with and the importance of the the jobs and the just the details, the day-to-day -day details. She gets it because she was here and she experienced it. And she's she's been a, a great advocate for us on the district level. And um, yeah, she's it's been a really... Um, great opportunity to have someone with that experience as the superintendent. Cheryl, what's the biggest um, failure or disappointment you've had in your life and what did you learn from it? So this is a really hard question. I feel like I got quite a few things that I'm like, hmm. huh, I wish I would have Don't done we that. All. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish. Um, and so I thought about this and like I said, there's, quite a few things. And uh, there's two things, I guess, related to athletics that kind of stick out in my mind. One was, so, so when I attended Snow College, I, I had a basketball scholarship to play for snow. So I played basketball for snow. Um, and then uh, after when I got down there and was playing basketball, uh, Phil Murray was the softball coach and I ended up walking on and playing softball. I had never played fast pitch softball in my life. We didn't have it in high school. I didn't have it, I, but I'd played softball. So I, I walked on and I actually, I made the team and I played softball that first year at snow. And then the second year uh, played basketball and then just was kind of feeling burned out and decided not to continue playing softball. And, actually has haunted me I guess since then because I missed it I thought I was tired I thought I was needed a break it was a bad decision mm. I feel like I ended up actually going to most of the practices and shagging balls while they did batting practice because I was missing it and uh, anyway so that was I guess a decision that I needed to think more about and not because I ended up like that was a poor decision on my part to not finish that out. Um, yeah. All right. Let's share. Let's have you share with our audience your life as an educator before you became the AD and exactly how you got the job. Obviously, you took over when Sharon left, but mm -hmm. share that story with us. Yeah. Um, so. I, I'm a math teacher. That's my degree is math major with a PE minor. So I, my husband actually graduated. We both graduated from Weber State uh, the same time in the spring of 93. And he, he got uh, hired um, to be a seminary teacher and assigned to teach here in Mount Pleasant. And at that point, I just happened to get hired at the high school. So we were at the same school basically and um i taught one year of pe and math split and then from then on i've been just teaching math no pe um and i love teaching math it's i i really do love the classroom and that part of it um at the same time i got hired to teach math i started coaching in the first year i coached like freshman volleyball and then assisted with basketball and coached track. And I continued to coach basketball and track for a few years after that, and then dropped the track and then continued with the basketball. Um, 
working closely with Sharon. John Erickson was the AD when I first came and worked with him, you know, as a coach. And then Sharon moved into that AD position when he went as an administrator and and just coached for all those years. And then I got to a point, my, I have four boys and they, they were getting old enough. They're in high school, getting involved in athletics. And I was having a hard time coaching the girls and missing my boys games. And I decided it was time for a, a change. And, and mainly I should say I coached girls basketball for the majority of that time. I, I took over as the head coach for girls basketball for Sharon after just a few years. And I ended up coaching, I think about 17 years of girls basketball and uh, just got to the point that, all right, I need to focus and be able to spend more time with my family now. And, but I told Sharon, Hey, I don't, I still want to be a part of athletics. It's a big part. So I volunteered to be her assistant as an AD. I just said, I'll volunteer. I'll just help you, whatever. And from there, then it became a paid assistant position, a little stipend here and there. And then when she moved on, um, retired and moved, I was able to be hired as the head AD. So that's a great story. You, I listened to the, your stories of education. I was a math teacher for 34 years myself. <laughs> And I coached girls basketball for 10 of those years in my early yeah. days of being the AD. So uh, we certainly share a lot in common. Yeah, it's a it's a good time. Talk about the job of athletic administrator today and how it is different from when you first took over. And I, I want to say this, let's obviously COVID was a big deal, but let's leave COVID out of it and just talk about how the job is so much bigger and how it's changed since you've had it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is uh, it used to be stacks and stacks of papers and files of papers. And I'm so thankful for the online with register my athlete and register my coach. And because the requirements seem to keep increasing on the coaching end of things as far to be a certified coach and keeping track of who's done what classes and what certifications I say the technology has been the the biggest change and a great, great benefit to be able to do that. Um, another change would be um, for us, uh, new sports that we've added, girls wrestling, competitive cheer, and then next year we will add boys volleyball. So whenever you add new sports, it's a, well, it's an added responsibility and a great opportunity for kids, but it adds to the the job also. You mentioned certification of coaches. I want to get your take on this because you're familiar with what we're trying to get done with the legislature uh, at our end. Mm -hmm. But talk about the irony of the situation that uh, that the person at the school that requires no certification, even though you are certified, has to certify that all the coaches receive certification. So speak to that. Yeah, it is a little, I, well, I'll just say this. I certify every year, just like all my coaches. And I sign up as a, a volunteer for golf. For, I coach girls golf here for five or six years. And I, mm -hmm. so I just like tell the golf coach, Hey, you're going to, I'm going to sign up as a volunteer um, on girls golf and I'll be certified because I want to, First of all, I want to make sure I understand what they're going through and and have so if they have questions, I can say, oh, yeah, it's this and do this or what uh, be a better understanding of what they they're required to do. But it is kind of ironic that. They I'm in charge of these 75 coaches that need to be certified and yet I don't need to be certified. <laughs> Kind of and having ha having answered it that way, talk about talk about the importance of uh, getting your CAA, your Certified Athletic Administrator, which you are. Speak to our yeah. audience about that for those that are thinking about going down that road. Yeah, I think it's super important. And once again, I'll thank Sharon for this. As soon as as I started helping her, she was really um, 
encouraging and just basically said, hey, you're we're going to the conference and you're going to take these classes. These are the ones you need to start with. And it was some of the law classes, 50, I don't remember their numbers, 501 or five, you know, and I started there mm -hmm. and she was really um, supportive of like, there's so much to learn. And these classes are such a big benefit to that. And I, I believe that today, I, every year I sign up for at least one, usually two classes at the state conference, because there's, there's always new things to learn, new ideas to gain, um, inside on uh, way. Yeah. It's just, I think that being an educator and also I want to be a good, uh, you know, continue my learning and my growth and these classes and being a part of the UI AAA gives you that opportunity. And it's specialized in the things that we deal with every day. Well said. Let me ask you a question that I don't ask too many ADs. You're in a region that's a little bit spread out. So I'm not I'm not even sure what your closest home game would be or your closest yeah. visiting game would be. But talk about the challenges of being in a region because I spent my entire career up here in Salt Lake County. And my goodness, when I was at Jordan in the early days, a road trip was out to Tooele. Well, it's, you know, 30 miles and it's yeah. nothing compared to a smaller school like yours. So I, I want you to address that issue. Yeah. So we're actually fairly fortunate we're in the rural but we're pretty centrally located in where we have been in the region right now our closest region is manti and juab they're about 30 minutes away from us 30 40 but our furthest we go to union which is the three hour mark and uh it does it the some challenges that you face with that on scheduling is well i check every week i send a little uh I call it the hawk happenings out to the staff here at the school of here's when kids are excused from classes for softball or, and we send it and you have out so that teachers know what to expect from, you know, when students will be leaving their classes. And so to, to have to sit down and think, okay, we're headed to union. This is going to take us, you know, two and a half to three hours, but we can't take the Emma park road because it's closed in the winter so we got to go down in the canyon and back out so that's going to add to our time so i think logistics of trips that way always watching the weather do we need to leave earlier because of the snowstorm um those things i think are a difference uh, uh last week um yeah while i was at the conference i was on the phone we were headed to grand for softball and like mm -hmm. trying to get that all squared away but I feel like as far as other things, I think working with the other ADs in the region, we have a, a really good working relationship because we're all dealing with those same challenges. And and so we do uh, understand each other really well when it comes to, hey, our bus is going to be a little bit late because we ran into this or you're constantly, you know, making um, phone calls like that. And I've built some really good um, working relationships, I feel like, with the other ADs and can call and ask any type of question, which is really nice. And Allow, <clears throat> allow me to ask a follow-up. Okay. And I realize my geography is probably as good as anyone's in Utah. I'm thinking from Mount Pleasant. So do you, to get to Union, do you go up to Thistle and then over to price do you take the road that goes up to schofield if it's open or yeah and then go down and then take that road outside of helper and then go up that way yeah so our buses have to go 89 to thistle and then they catch highway six mm -hmm. um, and head towards helper and then just right. outside of helper you you can go up the little canyon i think it's right. 91 i think is the right. road Mm -hmm. But there is a little cutoff road. It's called Emma Park Road, but it's not maintained. It's before you get down in the canyon headed into Helper. And it's not maintained um, from like November to April. So you can't take that. But in the fall, when I go out for golf or volleyball or something, that, that little cutoff road saves you 20 minutes or more. It just cuts really? off that canyon. And you come back up. It's pretty bumpy and narrow, but the buses take it and it saves us a little time that way. If the, That's... if the weather's bad up over, um, 
Oh, shoot. What is that? I can't think what that summit's called now. Soldier Summit. Anyway, well, that one, and then there's one up over the pass as you get on 191. Oh, the, where the Bangor Monument is. I, uh, I know what if you're that, talking about. If the weather's bad, then we do have to, we go up to Provo. And, and then go up Provo Canyon. And, and around okay. that way. Yeah. And that's fascinating. I, I guess I misspoke. When I was first at Jordan, my first year, it was the most traveled because we had Jordan Murray, Judge, Tooele, Union, Uinta, mm -hmm. and yeah. Carbon. But that's after that, it was just basically, we had, I think, Uinta in our league for maybe four years. And then mm -hmm. in the early 80s, once 82 or three came, it was just basically that Salt Lake City League, maybe out to to Tooele, obviously, before Stansbury was. Right. Oh, so that's, that's well, fascinating. We've next year we lose Union but pick up Cedar City and it's about the same, just going south three hours instead of well, but Cedar place. Cedar at least you can go just what straight down to Gunnison, and yeah, then catch I 70 down, and, down to Richfield, catch I 70 over and yeah. get to Cedar. So, okay. yeah, so or we can go to Nephi and down, and they're about it's about the same distance, yeah. Yeah. Talk about your involvement with the UIAAA, how you first became involved. You you mentioned that, she, that Sharon got you involved in the conference. But talk about that. Talk about your first UIAAA conference. Talk about your first national conference. Okay. And then talk about the most recent UIAAA conference. All right. So my first conference, what I really remember about that was uh, I obviously went to one of the law classes there. Sharon says, you got to go to one of these. And. I did. And I remember. And, and Lee Green petrified you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, dear. <laughs> this is a lot of information and a lot of responsibility. So it kind of it, it does kind of it's eye opening to sit in some of those and have the reminders of what the responsibility really is. Um, so that was at the first conference. I do recall that. And this, how long this, ago was that? Oh, Probably in 2011. Okay. Yeah, 2011. So, yep, I think that was the first one. And then um, this last conference, uh, just last week, was I, I enjoy the conferences every year. And and like I said, I try and take a class. This, this year I took a class on curb appeal, how to make it our, you know, present our school better. Um, that was a good one. I also took a, a class on mentoring. I can't remember what it was, but the title, oh, student leadership mm -hmm. development, which is something that I hope to really incorporate. It's something I feel like we're lacking a little bit here in our programs is leadership. So I, I went to that one, enjoyed that. And then mentoring coaches is another area that I really want to focus on and try and improve on. And so I went to a workshop on that. Uh, I feel like at the state conference, you can find something that you can connect to and that will help you in your school, um, even though some presenters are from larger schools and the it's a different setting. You can still gain something that you're like, you know what, I could do that, but maybe in this way at the school my size. And it's a great opportunity to meet other ADs and get to talk to somebody face to face that maybe you've talked to on the phone several times over, over the course of the year, dealing with games and that, and great way to make connections. And I always walk out of there going, wow, I'm not the only one that's dealing with these situations that gives you comfort that others are, are struggling in some of the same ways, I guess. Um, and then I did get a chance to go to the national conference in Denver a couple of years ago. And I, I just have, I've always wanted to be able to go and it just worked out that I was able to make it that year. My, I didn't have a, a boy playing basketball or something that I was going to be missing stuff. And so I, I took the opportunity to go and same thing. You come out of there, you talk to people from across the country that are dealing with the same things that you're dealing with. And again, the education, the opportunities to, to gain education um, are great. And it was a great experience, and I hope to be able to go again. Hope to make that work. Very good. I want you to talk for a moment about the UIAAA 
student athlete scholarship program. I ask you because I know one of your boys uh, was a recent winner. And so I want you to share with our listeners what we've tried to do as the UIAAA in awarding these kids uh, some scholarship money. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. Uh, I, I'll just tell you, on our end, what we have done is we send out a message through Register My Athlete to all the, the seniors. We'll send out a, a message and say, hey, there's this scholarship opportunity for athletes, student athletes. Here's a link or come see myself or Tyler Bailey and we'll give you more details. And we try and encourage these kids who do so much. They're involved in so much with athletics and in a school our size, uh, they have other opportunities with leadership and, and they're, and we have some that are great students. And so we've, we've encouraged our, our students to, um, apply for that each year. Uh, so we've actually had several students over the past you know, receive this and what a great opportunity for them. I So I've actually had two of my sons that have received this scholarship. The one is at Snow right now and has used that to help with his education. And the, the other one, Carson, he's actually serving a mission in Canada. When he gets home, he'll use that to help him with his education. And then this year we had um, Tylee Henry receive mm -hmm. scholarship and that uh, just, you know, example of her she's played five sports for all four years of high school it's like an unreal it just doesn't happen and she's been no, i i think she's the one that had 16 letters which i think yeah, is a, a record for us she'll finish the she'll finish her senior year with 18 letter awards and five academic all-state awards because she's a 4.0 student also so We've tried, we always try and encourage our, our athletes that it's school first and you're a student athlete. And so this is just another opportunity for them to be awarded, you know, rewarded for that. And another thing, I try and participate in the golf tournaments to, not because I, I, I love golf, but also I know it contributes to that, that our students have benefited from. That's excellent. And when you see Tyler, tell him thanks, as you're aware, Tyler's on our scholarship committee. Yes, and that's a yeah. That's just not a committee where you show up and, you know, spend five minutes doing this or that. That's <laughs> he's got to read through all those applications. So that's a, that's quite a deal. So tell him thanks when you see him. And of course, uh, you're correct. North San Pete's had a little history of of athletes. So continue doing what you're doing. I want you to talk for a moment about one myth about being an athletic director that you'd like to debunk for the general public. It's probably the same one I've heard multiple times, but it's like, oh, you're so lucky. You just get to go watch games all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's Yeah, exactly right. What's the favorite part of your job, Cheryl? Uh, definitely the the athletes, uh, watching them. Um, I love to see them from beginning to end of a season and and to watch their, their growth and their in, improvement in their skills. Uh, I love to be able to go to an event and then be able to have a conversation with those athletes in the hallway or in the classroom after and say, you know, Oh, that was a great game. Or I, you know, that, that three pointer you made at the buzzer or whatever it is. I saw your home run off the scoreboard last night. Good job. Mm -hmm. And to make that connection, it means a lot to the kids, but that's my favorite part is to see that, um, they see that I, I'm there and I'm supporting them and, and care <clears throat> that I want them to do well. And so that's what, that's what I hope they, they see from that is that my support for them. Very good. Let's finish up with a couple of questions. The first being you have two suggestions for a brand new athletic director and they need to follow Cheryl's suggestions in order to be successful. What would your two suggestions be for that brand new AD? Um, first of all, I would say just ask questions, find somebody, call the other ADs and ask, cause there's always things that come up and you're like, Oh, I don't know. And just make connections with other ADs so that you are comfortable calling and just asking a quick question anytime. And I know the ADs around, we're all willing to do that and, and happy because we've been there and we've been 
have those same questions. So make connections with other ADs so you can ask questions and get um, input from others. And then I was thinking about this. So there's other things, but the one that sticks out is uh, maybe it's because it's spring and things have been hectic and it's all coming hard and fast right now. But um, when things are getting hard, remember why you wanted to do this in the first place and keep that in perspective. Don't let all the outside noise um, take away from your real reason and purpose for your your passion for what you're doing. That is some great advice. Thank you for sharing that. Let me finish with this question, Cheryl. What questions should I have asked you that I failed to ask you? You know, you kind of hit one. Um, and it was the relationship between, say, the district administration and, and how important is that and how do you build that? But it works out for me where Nan was the superintendent and we do have a great relationship and that that support is I think essential from the school board to the principals the superintendent I think that that was one that I had um I guess the other one and this I um could I do this job without the support of my husband and family and absolutely not would be my answer <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a great way to finish it. That wraps it up for this edition of the UI Tripler Connection. Once again, our guest today has been Cheryl Hadley, Certified Athletic Administrator, the Director of Athletics at North San Pete High School. Cheryl, thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a, it's a good thing, so keep it going. Thank you. For our listeners, we hope you tune in again next week for another edition of the UI Triple A Connection. 